Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to the Graph Kings podcast. We're back here in Moo Moo's Kent's hottest nightclub, and we're joined by another special guest and a good friend of mine, Matt Holmes. What's going on, brother? Nice Sorry, to meet you. One, we've met everybody, but <laughs> 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 nice to meet you again. Bro, do you want to just introduce yourself to everyone Absolutely. and just like give everyone a bit of an overview, mm -hmm. obviously? what you're doing, who you are, just for the people that don't know you and for the boys here as well. Sure, man. Yeah, so what's happening, people? First of all, massive shout out to the boys having me on the pod. Um, been a fan from the first episode. Doing a great job, guys. Um, I'm watching you grow episode and episode. You've got some great guests on, um, addressing some really good topics as well. So, you know, big props Cheers, to you. Cheers, bro. Um, so I'm Matt Holmes, 27 years old. I'm from York in North Yorkshire. Um, I live in a beef for the summer and Manchester in the winter. Um, recently just come back from living in Miami for a few months. Um, I work in nightlife and events. I also, um, I'm, I'm an online coach as well. And um, I do music. I'm a rapper as well, so. Uh, Jack, wow. a, yeah, Jack a lot of trades, mate. This is the thing. I, I feel like a lot of people are a bit confused about what you actually do, because all they see is partying and the stories. You're a bit confused, aren't you? Yeah, bro, I was like, what does this geezer do? Like. Honestly, because yeah, that's, that's mainly what people see from the stories, but obviously tip of the iceberg. There's and that's why I wanted to jump on the pod, man. I feel like, you know, a lot of people that maybe follow me or whatever, they see me on music videos or they see my stories, but they don't actually see the character behind Matt. You know, they don't actually yeah. see me talking and what I'm like day to day, what I actually do. Um, the man of mystery. You know? Yeah, so, of course. Um, it's good to, good to be joining you lot. Yeah, no, do you remember when we was talking as well? And when we first started this, Matt actually said to me, because it'll be nice, it'll be, it'll be good to jump on it at some point. And like, here we are, mate. We got past the mate. I'm on to you. Yeah, he said it since the beginning. So it's good to have you on, bro. But yeah, pleasure, bro. Yeah, man. So obviously, like, I mean, it depends where you want to start from, because again, like, I know you're heavily into music at the moment. I said to you, bro, you need to pursue this because I was listening to your stuff before we even met properly. Like we had each other on, on social media before we met. To be honest, I'll go into that, like how we met. I didn't even know this geezer. It was just social media friends again, seeing his stuff online, I thought it looks cool. I'd be for the same star lifestyle like us. So you can kind of relate to people even if you don't know them. Mm. I go to Manchester to uh, a festival. All I see is uh, someone going, yo, Oz, turn around, it's this geezer. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just started speaking from there. And again, like you have encounters when you go out, when you're absolutely off your nut excuse me off your nut and then you think all right that guy was cool but i was like yeah this guy's sweet like i reckon i can see us like being pals but obviously the distance is probably the only reason we don't probably see each other but it was a good encounter i was like, i'll probably see this kid again next time i saw him was on ivy yeah, went with Merck as well I, was like, he just, I remember he, we, we were flicking for instagram and he was just like we've got to meet this guy i was like who is he, he was like matt and he's like he's always with tings yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sold i'm that's, sold i'm coming that's the only reason i wanted to see you again running later than me literally that's that's literally like on what we did in our beef we just had it off it was good yeah it was really good like i mean that was where we properly properly met if you think about it, after the festival that's it. like we that's spent it. a bit of time there and it was yeah it was it was actually quite nice but boys stayed in touch as well aren't we? i think it just proves yeah. that you know you, like you can grow up with someone go to school with someone and now not even be in touch with them anymore or you can meet someone a couple of times in a beef or at a festival a rave whatever else and really actually get a genuine like connection genuine friendship there yeah of course you know you can live at other ends of the country and you, you still stay in touch man yeah that's it everything each other do um and that's kind of how it, how it started isn't it? yeah no it is mate it is and again like um i think um going back to obviously like kind of what you're up to and everything do you want to go into where do you want to start from bro we can talk about like the rap side of it or do you want to kind of focus more on like what you've been up to this year because i feel like you've been so active like people you've been to so many different countries yeah, like, what man, you've actually yeah, yeah. been doing the transition to miami yeah, because yeah. Of, again that came out of the the woodwork really it was really random yeah for, for real bro yeah yeah i'll merge merge the two together man so um you know i do music obviously i've done music for about 12 years now uh, a lot of people don't know that because i've only really been active with posting it online for about two years um before then i never really took it serious but it's something i've um i've loved doing it's always been a passion of mine um and and yeah it was one of them this year um i, I left my full-time job back just before christmas um, I kind of had a few little side hustles um, that were kind of keeping me afloat, still making me money. And I thought, you know what? I don't need to be in the UK mm. to make money. I've been stuck in the UK in this job, nine to five, Monday to Friday. I've not really had the chance to live and experience all the things that I didn't get to experience. Um, so January came, I released my second single, Samba. Um, yeah. Then was straight back in the studio, made Smooth, flew out to Dubai. And that was the first trip of the year, flew out to Dubai recorded a music video out there, um, put everything together from scratch, literally flew out there, found a videographer, found a lot of girls that I didn't even know two days before, um, met a lot of guys I didn't even know, and everyone jumped together. We, we, we made what I think is a is a really good video. Um, 
And then that was it. After that, uh, came home for like a day, flew to Rome, did three days over there, um, came back for two more days and then flew to Miami. Uh, Miami was a bit more planned. Um, I had some friends that I met over in Ibiza for a few years back that are now some of my best mates. They've been going out there year after year. They'd met some contacts over in Ibiza and it basically yeah. got them some work over there. They've been nagging me year after year saying, come out, come out. Um, you know, last year I had a missus. I was in a full-time job. It wasn't really the right time to come, but this year was, you know, so um, I just thought, fuck it. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just checking. Um, I just thought, fuck it, man. You know, um, America's always been on the to-do list. It's somewhere I went as a kid, but it's completely different to anything I've done. You know, it's so different yeah. to a beef, so different to working in Malia and a hell of a lot different to England. Um, so I got myself out there, done, you know, nine weeks, I think I was there for, mm. um, was working in the nightlife scene, really, um, you know, dug in deep with it and um, I enjoyed it, man. But, but, you know, nine weeks was enough, came home, Flew to a beef for about two days later. <laughs> that was really my detox. You literally did. You came back and my guy was out. And I was like, what are you doing, bro? Like, where are you? Yeah. You flying to our beef for straight away. But straight I, think, I think a lot of people, though, would probably want to know, like, the, <laughs> the differences between the two. Because, again, you're active. I think it appeals to a lot of people to want to be able to work. Well, get get the, your whole traveling side and making money out of it as well. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to IB for a Miami um it's both quite of a hotspot area that people go to for sure what would you yeah. say like the biggest differences are when it comes to the clubbing side of it the money side of it yeah yeah if you can um, elaborate on that a little bit it's more. huge man it really is like everything from the music scene to the people um i mean to break it down it's like a beefer if you're into your events into rave you're into house techno music it's probably the best place you can you can go to in the world um you know Whereas Miami, it's a city, it's not an island. So mm. obviously a lot of people are living and working there. Um, there's a lot of money there. Everything is very expensive, you know? So it's somewhere where I always say, if you're, it's a millionaire's playground. If you've got a shitload of money and you don't know what to do with it, go to Miami, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And you'll quickly spend it. Um, same way if you're a girl and you know, you're, you're a decent looking girl, um, you go out to Miami, you probably won't have to spend a penny. 6.5 you know, or whatever, yeah. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it, bro. Not even a 6.5, <laughs> <I'm a> 5.5. <laughs> 5. 5. Yeah, we, slim waist. We were talking right. about this the other day. Who was you saying that? You, you, there were some girls that he, he randomly, um, not that randomly, sorry, you was talking to, and you said they were just like average looking, and then you just said they were- Oh, like, I don't say average looking, they're probably watching. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. No, 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 yeah. straight eight, straight eight. But Ten yeah, tens. I mean, yeah, I'll, I won't give too much details now. <laughs> so I, I know they'll be watching, but- um. <laughs> Yeah, there was a few times, obviously. Um, <laughs> right I, under the bus. To be honest, this is this is like, I just forgot this is rolling. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're all good. What do you mean? We're on a podcast. I don't know. You got it rolling. Why should be here? Found the intro. I will, what I will say is like you know, obviously being out there, you don't get many English, but every now and again there was a few, mainly girls that would fly out, um, and I sort of get a message every couple of weeks, and I'd always get excited, man, because. The thing with the Americans, bro, like they just don't, they don't get your banter, they don't get yeah, your banter. Yeah. Like, I don't think personally I'm that hard to understand, but yeah. over there, you know. It's the accent, bro. Hey, what's, hey, what's your name? <laughs> uh, Matt, Max, Matt, Mark, Matthew, <laughs> Matthew. It was literally like, bro. <laughs> it was like that, like three, four, three, four times a day, bro. When you're there for two months, it gets charged. Exhausted. <laughs> it gets exhausted. So I was just looking, I was just looking forward to someone just understanding that my name is Matt. Yeah? I'm dead. And nothing else. So, um. So yeah, man, like there was, there was there was girls that would fly out and, you know, I'm talking, you know, a lot of the time, average looking girls, a bit above average. And, you know, they'd come out not knowing anyone, right? Mm -hmm. And they'd post a picture in Miami location, Miami beach. Can and literally up. within 24 hours, bro, they're on a yacht. Yeah. They go into restaurants that even I couldn't, I, well, I couldn't afford to go to, or I couldn't even turn up with six girls and get yeah, a yeah, yeah. for. Yeah, they were turning up to these places all free, all all um, just through into DMs, you know. Man. And um, and that's really is the reality of Miami. And to compare it to a beefer, it's like there is girls obviously getting them perks in a beefer, um, but yeah, you know. But I mean, you, you can't even compare it, man. Like you go to a club in Miami, and you know, for for someone that's not been there, that's going there and wanting to get a table, they walk in and they see, you know, what literally is six to one seven to one girls to guy ratio that's mad but all the tables are all promoter tables so they're all like you know girls that you know i work to promote myself so i mm. can tell you like you know they're all girls that have been approached on the beach or on instagram mm. they've been offered to come along to whichever club it is they get on they're in for free they're on a table for free they drink for free um 
so the girls are there not necessarily there because they want to be there but they're there because it's free yeah yeah you know? yeah um so, so that's the kind of vibe it is i mean would we take if it was free i'm surprised we would though in a way now it's a different world nowadays isn't it like instagram has changed the game for everything and it's so beautiful women are so accessible on, on your phone that if you're easy. if you're a club oh. remote all you got to do is go location tag she's fit let's send a dm Drop a little message yeah. send 20 dms out a day you're a club promoter in miami job done you got new girls in the city new tables to fulfill that's it so easy man we spoke about that on the last pod as well we're saying how difficult it is for a guy to um to be able to kind of go on to that or to to do these nice Mm. things you actually have a good network of people around you but that will lead on to the question is like i actually do think that you have a good network of people around you hence why you live such a a good lifestyle because again a lot of people seeing what you do probably think he spends a shitload of money and i'm sure you do but at the same time i know like going to miami you benefited a lot from the people around you because of the people you know that's so it. it's, it's it's so important obviously as cliche as it sounds can, your network is your network can we start a little bit before i want to find yeah. out so how old are you first of all i'm 27 27 right and i want to go a little bit further back so you said you transitioned from a full-time job with a girlfriend to this lifestyle now yep. which most boys would be looking and going that's me that's what i want yeah. to do <laughs> so how did you make the transition what was you doing before like what was the exact what was what was the job what was you doing yeah man so the full-time job i was working for Welcher. Um, I know a few of you, especially you, Michael, looking at you, has probably bought a bird of massage or a facial off there. <laughs> um, but I, I was working for Welcher, man. And, and the thing is, like, I was <laughs> I was living that lifestyle a bit before, so I was already doing the seasons in the beef on mm. the summer. I was already working, you know, Mali in my younger days, in between uni. Um, but with um, the full-time job, it was one of them where I thought, you know what, now's time to actually settle down, actually, like, you know, cut out the whole partying every summer living for the summer and you know make some make some real money make some good money man and um especially when brexit kicked in and i couldn't you know work back at ocean where i was working in ibiza i needed to to have like a backup man um so i got a full-time job and then pretty soon after i started working at Welcher, um i was approached by a guy i used to work with in events back in liverpool when i was studying there um and he's like i'm opening up a nightclub um i'm gonna call it vice it's gonna be miami vice themes and um, this is before I went to Miami as wow. well, so it's a weird coincidence. And um, I helped him out with a lot of the ideas, um, sort of became the face of the nightclub, you know? And, um, you know, I was helping- In Liverpool? Really. Yeah, it's in Liverpool, yeah. And I was helping grow the club and, you know, bringing people down and everything else. Um, so that was my first sort of side hustle. Then um, a- another thing was obviously I was kind of concentrating on my fitness. I was getting in shape. Um, so I was getting a lot of people messaging me just saying like, you know, how are you partying all the time, but you're still in shape and you, you, you're staying in Nick year round. Um, I'll pay you to just tell me yeah. what it is. And it got to the point where I was getting so many DMs. I was like, do you know what? I can actually make money from this. And I'm helping my friends. I'm helping people I know. And I'll charge a bit less than everyone else. Yeah. And do this on the side. I've never to this day promoted myself as a, a, an online trainer. Never once. I've never promoted it once. And I've got a lot of clients. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that has been my USP, just the fact that, I'm going out and partying, doing all the things that most PTs will tell you not to do, yeah. but still managing to get good results from them and get yeah. good results from myself. So I had that as a side hustle and then the summer came as well. And then, um, you know, back when Brexit kicked in and I could no longer work at Ocean or legally do a job out there, mm. um, I looked at other ways to do it. And I thought, you know what? All these people associate a beef with me because I've spent so long there when someone was booking a holiday, they'd message me first and they'd say, we want a villa for these dates. We want a boat for these dates. We need a table at this club. We need guest lists, whatever that may be. And I was sending this to other people, this work and making people a lot of money. Yeah. I was thinking, I need to get something out yeah. of this. Do you know what I mean? Like, why am I making someone else rich? So I teamed up with my boy. Um, he runs a concierge company out there called a B for Concierge Services, a little plug there. Um, and basically he sources all them things. Yeah. And you know, we spoke and we just said, look, you know, I'm going to send people your way and we'll, we'll split everything 50, 50. And, and that's exactly what we do, man. And, Fair game. Uh, and last year while I was working a full-time job, I was just working off my phone, you know, and I was making a lot more money from that than I was from my job. And I'm getting in like eight, half eight in the morning, grafting all day on the phone to make less money. It was like, I can just leave this job, still stay afloat and grow everything else I'm doing and actually see a bit of the world. Yeah, you know, sure. it just made sense to me, man. So that's that's kind of how I've ended up where I am now. It's good that you was able to transition it though. I think a lot of people again brave to take the leap as well, bro. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. For, for sure it's a risk, you know. Um but paid off. Well I did, yeah. 
Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, still, still he's in shape because of the 15,000 steps he does in the DC 10 every week. Just two steps in the whole 15,000 on the team, like, well, I'm telling you, 2025. Which, what, is, what is, like, the, the preference out of Miami and IB for, though, if you had to pick? I know you love IB for, but... It looked like I had a mint time out there as well. 10,000% of Aoife. Really? 10,000%. Second like, that. Like, mm, yeah. yeah. You, you've been to Miami. I've been Twice, Miami, yeah. yeah. No, I said the same thing. It's the most expensive place on earth. Yeah, for real, man. Like, I was in Dubai, as I say, like, what? A week before, and it was more expensive than. I don't than think Dubai is actually that bad. I don't think Dubai is that bad. No, 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 it's London. You can go to London and spend the same money as you would in Dubai. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, but the fact that, like, it wasn't just in Dubai, but we was doing all the luxurious. We were staying in the mm. villa, do you know what I mean? Everything else. And it was still cheaper. You yeah. know what I mean? Than the Bob standard things that I was doing in Miami. But, uh, but yeah, Miami was. It, it was one of them where I'm very glad I went and I had some great times there. But. Two months was enough, man. I was, yeah. You know, nine weeks was enough. I was I was genuinely ready to come home. I was excited to just be back in England for a bit. Mate. It looked really good. Um, but it's an experience, man. And it's something, some point in your life, you know, go and experience it. Yeah. Man, and, you know, you'll show you like the, it. The plan is to go back to Arbifa, though, and carry on doing the rest of the season then. Yeah, man. So while, you're still, still, while you're still working on the music thing as well, because how do you kind of balance that, all of that out as well? Yeah, man, good question. So that's kind of why I've come home for a bit before I moved back out there. Because, you know, when I was in Miami, back to obviously things being expensive. It was like music videos, studio time was just, I was just getting quoted crazy, yeah. crazy money. And it just wasn't even worth worthwhile for me. You know, I thought I'll just do the two months, get back um, and have a have a load of music ready for me to record. Yeah, when I get home. You. So, you know, as soon as I got back, the first night I got back from the beef, I was in the studio. Last night I was in the studio. Um, so it's just See getting that. as many tracks as possible ready, shooting a few videos in advance to be dropping them and then getting a few videos filmed in the beef. Yeah. Um, you know, so that, that that's the plan, kind of best of both. Like, where, where do you plan on the music stuff going with uh, going for you though? Because again, like we, we've spoke about this enough times. I was like, bro, like you're good at it. You obviously love doing it. Are you going to pursue it or like where do you actually want it to go? Do you know what? It, it's one of them where you know, like just how people have the five year plans. I want to be here. I want to be this rich. I want to be this and that. I don't have a set plan. All yeah. I know is I want to just give it my best shot and produce the best music I can possibly produce and learn how to market it the right way and you know find my sound find my audience yeah of and, course. and that's all i asked for man i genuinely enjoy doing this so like even though i don't make money at the minute minute off music i enjoy it so like i like putting the music out i like making the videos it's expensive um, as well bro like i mean for real man yeah people don't realize like even us doing this pod, this pod like people, similar, just think, it, yeah. people just think oh you just put two cameras there and you just crack on mm. like, it's, it's it's been spenny as well like for us to keep yeah, running yeah. and doing this I'm, my old man's like when you're going to start making money from this is it making you money because like, i abandoned it. i'm like daddy don't work like that you no. need to wait it's like turkish isn't it yeah like <laughs> it's like turkish. Typ typical turk bro it's like when is it going to make money yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, making yeah, your money yeah, let's yeah, leave it my mom's iranian yeah the same thing it's like you know yeah, look at that exactly, result isn't it yeah exactly the same thing and, and that's it what people don't see you know it's it's easy for someone to sit there and say oh you ain't released music for a while or be consistent but being consistent means making money and making money means putting your time elsewhere into yeah other things and that's been the constant battle i've had yeah. for many years which is why i'm only now at a position where i can actually you know put a bit of money into it and a bit of time into yeah it, you know uh but you know i just want to um you know give it my best shot this year um, I've got a show coming up August 5th. That's my first ever show. What show is it? Um, Belgrave Music Hall in Leeds. I swear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, so I'm no, I think I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Posted it a couple of times, but um, that's what the first first show I've done. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that and I'm hoping from there it's going to open more doors. I want to do more shows. Um, I want to be getting more hits, get my you know, my music out to as many people as possible and played in places like this. Yeah. <laughs> Like, with, with, yeah, with, with the stuff you're doing online as well do you I, I don't know if you do but do you ever get any like trolls or hates on it or um surprisingly and i don't want to speak too soon but no yeah. I, um, i've not really had anything i think that's because i ain't gone to really push that on tiktok yeah, that's, 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 that's <laughs> <laughs> you've been getting views next question <laughs> i don't think it's tiktok um, i think it's sainsbury's you know, but the worst part is now any like if i speak to any female now they're like you're gonna leave me in sainsbury's i'm like i can't get away i get it. off i get off the back of you yeah i get it yeah you little I, 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 can't, I can't get one. <laughs> yeah, but does it stop you getting anywhere? Yeah, I can't get in it. Well, no, it doesn't. Doesn't. It? No one cares. Like, no one cares. It's like what you said, boy. You know, I've been watching the pods, and it's like end of the day. You know, people can hate as much as they like. It's another viewer. It's another comment. Mm. It's only getting more people onto your yeah, video. It's, yeah. it's not like we're saying anything that outlandish. Nah. We're, that's it. We're only having banter amongst boys, and yeah, mate, mate, you might have made a mistake there, and at least come up and open openly said it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not too deep. So that's it, man. You know, and and you know, you watch my music videos. Yeah. <laughs> They are like 
I wouldn't say controversial, but I am out there. I'm doing, I'm quite brave with the stuff that I post. The you know videos, what, what with the bundles mm. on the phone. The bundles, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I know there's people there sat there scratching their head, but that's the whole point. I want people talking. Yeah. You know, I want to put stuff out Controversy there. Controversy sells. Think, Have you seen that video? Flip, I can't believe you did that. You know, that's what is, is going to, if I do blow, that's what's going to help. Your videographer, was it Liam? Liam, Liam yeah, 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 yeah. I was Top chatting to him the other day actually. He's a sound geezer. He's been out in yeah, Dubai yeah, for so really long as well. Guy. Yeah, yeah, years, he's doing man. Bits yeah, he's as well. a veteran man, but really, really good guy. Yeah, yeah no, he is. To get on a pod actually, you know, if he's um, if he's ever. I actually, I actually spoke to him yesterday, and I was, I was just talking to him about whatever, and then he was, I was just saying, bro, like you would actually be really good on the pod. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if you know him. What's his second name? Liam Bowie is on. Um, Shout out to Liam, by the way, he's a top yeah, geezer. Yeah. Proper if we ever went to Dubai, I was like, he goes, if you want someone just to chat shit about now, he goes, I'll do it. In Dubai, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a nice fella as well. Can maybe link yeah, yeah, the really first time I'll do it in the part time. I'm joking, we ain't going to get in the part time. Small world. You was in Tulum recently as well, though. No? Tulum. Yeah. When? When? Where, whereabouts? Um, I was there. So mm-hmm. I was there quiet season. Um, so it was. Over New Year's? Nah, bro. Literally, like, I got back from Tulum. Three weeks ago. All oh, right, I was over there for New Year. Right. This is a funny thing, yeah. Actually, I haven't said this yet. So when I was going to Loom, it was a last minute when I jumped on it. The boys had booked it, um, and from Miami, it's an hour and a half away. So the, oh, what, what I do everywhere I go, yeah, if I'm going to a new place, I always YouTube it. I'll always like type it in. I typed in Tulum vlog, and you came up. Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I watched. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Was it good? Vlog, man. I never, yeah, yeah, Mimbo. Like I never realized that you did the the vlogging on the side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you got a good YouTube channel there. Very valuable. Thank um, you, man. You know, so some valuable information, but Tulum, unbelievable, bro. It's the yeah. winter of Ibiza, you know. I'm, I'm going to go back in January because my birthday is January the 7th, the worst date of the year. <laughs> um, so it's about time that changes, but unbelievable, bro. Zamna Festival. Crazy you know, place. Genuinely one of the best events I've ever done, man. Right, like, it's the one the production's like, nuts, isn't it? The production is just cr- like, crazy. I, still, I, I go on my phone like a weirdo, yes. Like, just sit there watching the videos I've got for that night and get goosebumps. Really? It's, just, it's crazy, man. It's, it's the, just, one, the it's sound goes through you. I've yeah, yeah. said I've wanted to go for a lot. Well, not when I say a long time, past few years, but it's just it's just not having it will. But, brother, it's expensive as hell. Yeah, no, that's what I'm yeah, saying. It's, it. Especially it, over it, the year. Well, Spenny. It it's helped. like... Go on, go on. I was say when I went because I've been twice. I went this year and last year. During COVID times, it was cool. It was actually you could. It was reasonable. You're like, yeah, that's fine. And when they cottoned on the next year, more and more people come because obviously that was an in place to go now. And all the prices hiked right up. And I was like, wow, this place is similar to Miami. I, was, I felt the price vibe was similar to Miami. I was thinking, wow, the culture here has shifted completely because they know they can get away with it. That's well, yeah. yeah as soon as they got on the map from COVID, it yeah, just, like rocket. Because what happened was Mexico was the only place you could really go in COVID times, like 21. Oh, it yeah, was, so. Yeah everyone flocked there but i remember i'll tell a brief story i'll sidetracked a bit i'll never forget this and i sold this to the boys going this year and it wasn't the same which was a shame but because it was covid everyone flocked there i never forget my first night i was driving down this dirt track there's only one way one road in one road out dirt track so i still got whiplash so, <laughs> <laughs> so you're driving down this road and i'll never forget this is the first year i went for the vlog he watched i was sitting in, i sat in the, uh, the window seat in the car and i was just like oh my god it's like my explore page it's like just tens everywhere <laughs> everywhere sold I look, I look at the other windows tens everywhere it's like bruv i've never been to a place with so many birds in my life so it was, like, it was un- unbelievable i mean 10 out of 10 birds all approachable all talk to you none of them sold up sold right so that's how the vibe was the first year so i'm telling all the boys the next year's like boys you've got to come to tulum it's like i've never seen so many fit birds in one place but it, it, because everyone flocked there for that one year the ratio changed the, the ratio changed next year so it's hardly any birds and if they were they were on the tables and they were oh they were brasses bro yeah i, you, I met a lot of sold them. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe that don't believe that how's that compared though like obviously you you've been to miami you've been to ib i know what ib for like, but i've not been to the states so when it compares when you compare like the women's side of it like is it difficult to run game compared to certain countries i well? think running game in I believe it's the easiest, but it's the, le- in my opinion, it's my opinion, less likely to pull because it's a different kind of vibe. Yeah. Remember, you, everyone knows what they go to IB for. Not everyone, but you know what yeah. everyone goes to IB for. So the social interactions you have with females aren't the same as they would be if you was on a table in Miami. Yeah, yeah. So all the females are all about the dance. They're, they're, they're part of the mm. vibe as well. It's not really it's that. It's more clubby. Well, it's, uh, no, it's, it's more ravey, IB for, as you know. So no, like, no, sorry, I meant Miami's. Miami's more, more yeah, clubby. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So Miami, clubs, yeah. Miami, I'd say Miami, Tulum, uh, even Cali, Vegas, they're all very similar. Mm. It's more like upbeat chats, birds, blah, 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 blah. I, beef, I don't find our beef as a place where you really chat to a bird, unless nah, you're Ocean. Nah. It's I'd rather be hugging one of you boys, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're Ocean. Ocean's a bit yeah. more different. Ocean's a bit different. That's, mm. that's more of the clubby Miami scene, I, I find. Yeah, yeah. But anywhere else in our beef, I don't feel like it's that vibe You get at lost all. in the music. Yeah, you do. Like, I, get I, lost. 
In the sesh, didn't you? In the sesh, yeah, yeah exactly. Do. I mean, Merck would know a lot about this one. It's awfully <laughs> quiet over there, but... Mate, yeah. I think for Ibiza, you need pre-game, like, like we said off-camera, like, you even need to know a girl, or you need to be speaking to a girl in the or day, and go with them. Yeah. Meeting them in, like, DC-10, it's just like... It's hard work, isn't it? Can't yeah. speak, mate. It's hard work. <laughs> what? Can, can barely <laughs> move, mate. What's <laughs> your name? <laughs> nah, me, me, me and Merck, mate, like, we, were, we went to Ibiza Joss together. Joss, for me, it's yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> Mate, me and this guy in, in our big, like the first place we went to was Ocean. We was on it. It was just like, bro, like tactical, like this is what we're gonna do. Two man formation up front attack. Literally, <laughs> um, li literally, right. literally, within about forty five minutes, we were so fucked. We could we couldn't even talk to each other. I was just looking at him. He's looking at me. I was like, <laughs> just stand. <laughs> we just look at. I was like, bro. But next day we redeemed ourselves. But that day we was off it, mate. Like I just remember oh, not no. being able to say anything yeah, to anyone. Anyway. We actually had a chat afterwards. We were like, that can't happen again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so everyone knows, uh, Mason didn't want us to announce it, but we're, the Graph Kings are officially going to IB for at the end of June. We're not telling any dates or anything, but it's official. We're actually doing it. We're gonna venture out and uh, yeah, 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 It'll be yeah, good. do some do some business. Yeah, do some. Yeah, I do some oh, business. Do some business. <laughs> Curry corn <laughs> rice. <laughs> You'll be out there around that yeah, time. Man, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll hopefully be, be moved back out there sort of mid-June time. Um, you get so, in a yeah. with the boys, just going to plot out there. Partner with the boys, yeah. Base out there, just grow everything that I'm I'm currently doing elsewhere. And um, and yeah, man, I just thought, why not? You know? Mate, the things as well, out there again, like the network of people that you, what, is that how you say the network you make? The network's your net worth. Yeah, so yeah. like you, the amount of people you meet, and even we said it, like we're going out there for, for business reasons as well as, well as pleasure, but... We said it to each other, look, we're, we're on it. We need to do our work before we party. And again, we want to meet people and yeah. you never know what doors it's going to open. Facts. And it's just yeah. so important to kind of put yourself out there because a lot of kids are probably scared to take the leap. Like we've, we spoke about previously how someone watched our pod and it inspired them to kind of leave the country and go somewhere else. Yeah, so I remember that, yeah. Things like Spain, that. Spain, was it a beefer? He <laughs> 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 left that part out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Langland, Spain. I just, want to, I just didn't want to drop his location. Yeah. Six yeah. months yeah. later, we're like, it's the worst time. decision I've ever made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Terrors, no money in his bank. Lost three stones. Lost three stones, six people. <laughs> Honestly. Seen it. Mate, oh. The thing is, that if I had done a season RB for me, all my games will be gone. I'm not saying I'm hench, but I'm all right. But it's, <laughs> it, you've got to keep that balance as well. Awful. That's it, man. Yeah. What'd you say, Sam? Nothing, bro. What'd you say? I said, who's been lying to you, cuz? Get your top off. Let's go and show everyone what's, what we're working with. Come on. You know, take my top off already, yeah? Come on, Sam. <laughs> the, the nightclub's not actually active, you know, know right? <laughs> no, it, it is hard to keep that lifestyle like and the, the gym side of it on a level because i go out once now i'm right off for four days so oh. hats off to you bro because you go out so much i think Preaching. fuck me how's this geezer alive yeah. I'll be yeah. Yeah. I, I ask myself that question sometimes but yeah and I mean, your skin looks good as well do you reckon, yeah because yeah, if i go like on, on a bender my, my skin starts coming up well actually to be fair it depends what kind of session it is but like if it's a, if it's a non-sleep session and it's ib for session my skin goes to the shit mm. and I look, I look like i've been beaten up so yeah. funny now, story man I'm, no, no, go on, bro. I was just going to say, but funny story with the, with the skin thing, like, I've never really, I don't have a skincare regime, do you know what I mean? I used to back in the day, so I oily skin, but I got a few sunbeds, that's about it. But I, I got a facial offered to me um, last year, and um, I went along, and I sat down in the in, in the bed, and the guy was like, you've got one of the best skin I've ever seen on a, a male. I don't, you just trying, I don't know if he was just trying to chat me up. Right? <laughs> but, yeah, he was, he was Starts rubbing your legs while he's saying it. You big boy. Uh, he, was, he was saying, he was like, you know, what, what's your what's your secret? I was thinking, like, these are just, like, do a season of the beef every year, like, go out two, three nights a week, smoke, vape, and drink. <laughs> like, that, that's my skincare regime, do you know what I, I mean? Swear. Um, but it's one of them, man, like, I've, you know, thank Give you. Give Botox. Thank you, my dad, not yet. Yeah, uh, thank you, mum and dad. Um, yeah. Is there right there. You're Iranian, right? Half Iranian. Half Iranian, half Scottish, man, yeah. Half Scottish, half Scottish as well. Oh, yeah, I'm half Scottish too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, whereabouts? Uh, Edinburgh. Okay, yeah, sorry to hear that. Of Edinburgh, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Someone's got to live there. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's fine. Nice. What, when are the dates you go and saw for? We'll try and link up. We'll try and make sense, right? Definitely. We'd we'll have to. Yeah. He's there before us. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, you'll go back soon, I take it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying sort of like, 15th, 20th around that time, man. Um, I should be there. So I'll make sure I want me another. I'm, I'm there for, for a new lot there, man. Yeah, oh, we'll definitely do a link up. We'll definitely, definitely be a link up. We'll try and get TM there as well. Imagine all of us. Oh, man. Oh, that link up. Are you good on it? TM, yeah, if you see this before we come out there, bruv, we're coming. Yeah, we're coming. <laughs> so what, what do you, what's the plan this year? So I know, I know you're going back to Ibiza. I know you've got your music video stuff, but have you got like a solid plan? What, like, have you got blocked out 
I beef for this period, then X, Y, Z this period. What's what's the goal? What's, what are you trying to achieve at this year? Yeah, man. So over the next few weeks, um, I'm in the process of actually launching a online business, basically live coaching. Um, so sort of like... Um, uh, what's the word like self improvement for yeah, yeah. yeah. well being yeah uh, health and yeah, well being so yeah, yeah, you nice. know as I was saying before with the the online training and nutrition I don't promote that I don't currently have anything other than my DMs and my WhatsApp to you know work my clients yeah you know? so I don't promote it online I don't have a website or anything so um I got particularly this year when I was in Miami I was getting so many messages off guys on Instagram both people I knew people I didn't know and they were saying you know what's your advice on this? How can I go and do this? How can I do that? Um, people saying like, you know, you should actually like make this a service that you offer mm. where you just, whether it's motivational, whether it's a bit of advice, whether it's, you know, just a general chat, make this um, something that you do. And I love chatting to people. I love helping people. I love giving people advice. I thought, why don't I just implement this all into one place and, you know, create a, a platform where people can get those services, yeah. you know? Um, so That's I'm a good idea, bro. Yeah, good man. Appreciate it, man. So I'm in the process of um, launching out over the next few weeks. I'm just getting a website made. made, And as I say, it'll be a combination of self-improvement. It'll be courses and it'll be um, my, my fitness stuff as well. Would you do like um, a little trip, like a little section to do like trip to here and there and advice on that? Or um, is it just from, or is it literally just on like the one-to-one? -one so the course is going to be, yeah. So, so the course is going to be short videos, that, exclusive videos, just me basically talking different topics. I've got like a load of them on my phone that I'm going to discuss um, just with different advice and motivational things. And then um, there's going to be like the one-to-ones. People can have like a one-hour call. 10, 10, a block book in a 10 one hour course yeah. um, and uh, always a free consultation. Do you know what I mean? And they can speak to me first, get to know me. Um, c c no one wants to put money into, yeah, yeah. Uh, Good man. you know, they don't trust. So, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, as well as that, obviously it's the music. It's getting as much music done as possible before I go out there. Um, so once I'm in a beef, I could just boom, drop a video, drop another video and just in between that market, it, market, yeah. market and get it out there man be some sick music um, videos out there as well to be fair like nowadays, that's right? it man and, and yeah. the thing in a beefer is like I'm actually plugged there I'm actually you know I can actually get the the cars the boats the yeah. girls in there do you yeah. know what I mean it's a lot easier than Miami where every fucker just wants paying yeah. I mean? yeah and um, tipping after you paid them and tipping mate yeah, yeah. and the tax on top yeah exactly yeah. That. So, um, it's, it's a, yeah man so that's my plan getting out to a beefer networking again and just keep you know building the concierge business and um, obviously launching this business and then the music as well and seeing where that takes me, you know, um, winter wise, when I get back, whenever, whenever that'll be, whether it's September, October, um, potentially Dubai. Yeah. Um, I did love it out there and I could see myself living there. Yeah, me too. But it's just making sure that everything is, I'm in a position where I can run everything off my phone, yeah, yeah. my laptop um, and live out there and, and not have to worry about, you know, yeah. money and, and everything else. That's, that's the goal for all of us yeah, boys yeah, as well, well, isn't it? We, we, we design, eventually nice. want to move the GraphKings pod to Dubai full time. Obviously, we haven't got a solid expected date but we're looking towards back end of this year early next some point yeah. oh. if it all if it all goes to plan gives me a semi that brother I'm yeah not gonna lie. it's gonna happen man we're, man we're speaking to existence it's I gonna happen to existence, man. Exactly. It. i bet you at one point this podcast was just an idea for it you. was yeah. it was it was in his kitchen an idea in his kitchen <laughs> yeah, 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 it yeah. was it's always in the kitchen man. always, like, always in the kitchen at four in the morning <laughs> on sunday yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> on a napkin like, we didn't start <laughs> a podcast <laughs> when i was about to ask what time bro it's mad i messaged a group saying we basically got to know each other on the pod as well a lot of people like say yeah the chemistry between you boys that like, everyone like we love it now that they've watched that like, i've got a, i've got one friend that's watched it pretty much from the beginning to the end mm. josh shout out to josh's lovely geezer and it's like bro he goes now he goes you can tell you lot are like this like it's beginning it goes you guys were cool but now he goes you can see the chemistry between all of you guys so i think again we pretty much got to know each other on the pod as well and now we're talking about moving to dubai like that's mad given that obviously this grows and it will grow let's touch some wood like my head i'm sure <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> no, mate, that's that is the goal i'd love to do that as well to be fair man like to to get out of here because again there's no sun here mate i can't do it this is why you're tanned yeah. this is why you're good looking mate it's because you've got the <laughs> sun behind you four, um four people back home wondering why does anyone want to move to dubai why from you why do you want to move to dubai um there's a number of reasons firstly it's safe you know and that's a big yeah, thing man. and i know don't be wrong the the crime rate of a place has never stopped me from going there, you know? Mm. But I mean, to compare Miami and Dubai, Dubai can walk down the, the street with a nice watch. It's all good because the person that's walking past you has got a nicer one on their wrist, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. You can leave your gaff unlocked. Like no one's 
going to do anything. Do you know what I mean? It's a safe place to be. Everyone is very, very friendly and welcoming. Yeah. That's another big thing for me. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. Same you great. go to the shop, a restaurant, the service is impeccable. Um, you really feel welcome there. You yeah. know? And, and that's something you don't get in many places. Um, they don't look at you like a foreigner, do they? No. They don't look at you like a foreigner. They look at you like you belong there. Do you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Almost like they're the outside, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and then um, obviously tax rates as well. Um, you know, expenses, living costs, the, the weather, it's hot year round. Um, lots of very nice looking girls. Uh, everyone speaks English. You know, it's, it's, it is almost like, you know, everything you'd kind of want in your... If you was to draw up a perfect get place, that's how they've designed Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah facts. facts they just sat there and go, right, what, what would you, where, where would you want to live and what do you want around you? You want, like I say, you want people to be welcoming, you want to be safe, you want good service everywhere mm. you go, you want good people around you. There you go, let's build yeah, the and in, it's not, the, it. the people you're rubbing shoulders with. Yes, yeah. It. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like the networking um, is the endless. Networking. Yeah, Everyone there that you meet gen nine times out of ten, right? There's always gonna be an arsehole everywhere you go, right? But nine times out of ten, the people that you meet there have gone there because they've got the exact same mindset of you. Yeah. They've wanna got away from the boring life of the UK and the shitty life of the West to go out there to the east who I think are absolutely just taking over. Mate, and they wanna go there and yeah. rub shoulders with good people, yeah. network with good people, start businesses with good people, make a better life for themselves. Like they or everyone in that place. It's like prison, you put all the bad guys in yeah. one place. Dubai you've got all the people that wanna do well with their life in one place. Like you got all the nutters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, it's so true though, man. And it, when you're around that as well, like success motivates you, man. It's just yeah. like yeah. That, that being around that much success. That like, that what is that is what normal is. It breeds it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? When you're, it depends what you're around. I mean, like you said, it breeds it. I had a friend that moved out there recently, transitioned his business, and he was like, "Bro, guys, I'm literally here one month, and he goes, I'm investing into other businesses through yeah, the, through the people he's met. He said, I would have never thought to, but being around it again, it you kind of just." You know, you grow in numbers at the end of the day, but... Well, you touched on a great point. It's like, that's one thing I've really got out of this year. You know, as much as like, I was in Miami, I was spunking a shitload of money. Being around those people in Dubai, in Miami, in Tulum, where like real successful people, people that have like, people that are just like me and you, mm. that have done really, really well for themselves, that have millions in the bank. Being around that, when you're around that enough, you're just that hungry for it, that it don't even feel like work when you're doing something. Yeah, like yeah right. that's spot on. It. You know, the, the inspiration and motivation I've got from this year alone, and we're only in what May, yeah. you know, is more than I've had in the last five years. You know yeah, 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 spot on. So, you know, they, Dubai, they, you know, big move and great move. They say if you, uh, if you hang around with four rich people, you're about to be the, you're you'll about be to the, be the fifth. fifth one. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, when we, you know when you go on holiday, yeah, I just want to touch, you know when you go, you go away anywhere, <laughs> and you're always apprehensive when you land there, like, are they, is the taxi driver going to rip me off? Is this person going to yeah. rip me off? You've always got, are they, are they trying to do me over here? Especially our beef, you know when you get out of our beef, the dodgy oh, yeah, taxi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Crazy way, it right doesn't there. matter where you go <laughs> on holiday. The back. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're always like, boss, like, where do you want to go? Like, yeah. <laughs> but there's obviously in the back of the cab, like, <laughs> something, uh, something else, something else. <laughs> yeah, always trying to offer you something, something else. else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at you through the little window, yeah, 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 yeah. Little bag of flour. But they're always everywhere you go. Doesn't matter where Ibiza, doesn't matter where you go. You're always, always, you're always apprehensive. Women may have moved out to Ibiza, Dubai. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. When me and Mason moved out to Dubai, we had to go and do like a toiletry shop and food shop and stuff. And we used the little mart below below us, and we walked in there, and we was proper apprehensive like the people selling us stuff. Obviously, it's our first day there. We don't know what Dubai is about. And I'll never forget this. It always stuck into my head because it's never happened anywhere else. I went to the till. I bought all my shopping. I went to the till with like proper expensive imported Andrex uh, toilet paper. Because obviously you want Andrex. You don't want a rough bum. Come on, saying. Boy, yeah, but it's all, it's, it's, all, it's all imported because obviously it's, it's a yeah, Western yeah, thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I walked to the till and he says, well, boss, this is very expensive. I was like, here we go. He's going to try and sell me something here. He goes, no, boss, this is very expensive. Why don't you go get the cheaper one? It's the exact same quality. I was thinking, it's a, Mad, there must yeah. be a catch here. What's he doing here? Went to the back, went, brother, what about this one? I promise you the same quality. I went, I live, I, I live above. It better be the same quality. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, trust me. about that after I've been to the toilet. <laughs> it saved, it saved uh, my uncle's pennies, but it was like, maybe it was eight quid and he saved me four quid. It was like four quid to buy this like, pack of thing. And it's the same amount, the same quality. I was thinking, I said to Mason, that's never happened to me before. Someone's actually, like, who works there has gone out of his way to try and help me out. But do you, know, do you know what he's done there, though? He's actually, like, created a network there where now he knows that you're going to be coming back there yeah, to get true. from him. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he true. knows he's missing out on three quid, but he knows you're going to come there again. Yeah, it's true. So as much as, obviously, he's doing it because he's probably a nice person, people out there just know how to network as well, again, because he's probably around yeah, so many true. successful people. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, again, yeah. like, I, I think, though, with Dubai, like, one of the reasons the country is so safe is because... People are actually scared of the, like the system because probably if you, yeah if, yeah yeah. If yeah. you fuck up there, mate, you're you're not getting a slap on the wrist. You're sure. going in and doing time, sure. and which is why we have so much problems here because people don't respect the government. People don't respect the police because 
they know they can serious yeah like yeah, it's, 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 you get the worst kind of the people let's talk about like nonsense in a way they get away with like the most fucked up, yeah, the, yeah, the most fucked up thing you could do and they get a slap on the wrist so they're not scared to to do the things they need to because they know it's just going to be a little slap on the wrist around dubai you ain't getting away with that mm, you're getting no. put behind bars so you need a system like that as much as they help people and uplift them and they do the whole tax um tax thing i think people are Genuine public respect for their system. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. 100%. Assist. You don't even really see police presence there, do you? I mean, I, I, that's what you say. We got they never see our bill. You know, one week, I've seen the police are. once. Yeah, literally. We, the, we oh, was there a month, we saw them once. And yeah, was, literally. Walking back from the gym, went, Mike, that's the first police car we've seen since we've been there. One one whole month, we was there over a month, and it was one police car the whole time we see it. It's not you think in England, yes. Uh, yeah, everywhere, isn't it? And and everywhere. It happens if they're right. Oh, we'll increase police presence. There's a shooting in Miami, they increase police presence. But has it really solved the issue? Like, it's the same thing is still happening. Do you know what I mean? Something's, something's worse, something's better. But, but even, boys, I think that's just where we grew up, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. when you go out to, like, the countryside and stuff like that, you never see police and things like that. Like, when I lived in London for four years, right? Go sleep at, go sleep at night, land. You just, all I'd hear is sirens. sirens. Right. All yeah, I hear yeah, is yeah. sirens. Non-stop. Ambulance sirens and police sirens. All night. It's almost become, like, a comfort noise yeah. in the end, where it's just, comfort like, noise. It's, it's mad, bro. It's all I heard at night time. It's all, all day long and all night long. It's all you'd hear is sirens. It's weird, but then you go out to the countryside and you don't see our bill. Yeah, that's never our bill sitting about. Do you know what I mean? That's why a lot of people don't hear sirens and come around like Kent or what? South yeah, London, South yeah, East, South East of England. They, yeah, they leave or, and just go to somewhere like nice Cornwall. I don't know. Yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. That shouldn't have to happen. You shouldn't have to leave your city. Do you know what I'm saying? Dubai, you are in the city, and that ain't happening. Yeah, you know what I mean? never hear a siren. Yeah, and if you do, it might be like a fire engine or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it. Someone's going down for a long time. Yeah, that's it. Matt, what 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 advice would you give to? people our own age youngsters who are thinking about going to work abroad doing a season i'll be far miami like what advice you give to them if they're tinkering on the idea should i do it should i not like what benefit has it brought to your life yeah man and let's talk budgets as well so people get an idea of how much these things cost and stuff yeah um so i mean my first advice would be if you're a youngster so you're at uni um you know maybe a 21 or younger um my first advice would be don't jump straight into a beefer you know do the smaller ones first like i did I did two lads holidays in Malia, then two seasons in Malia before I even went to Ibiza. Of course you, know, you did. Before I even did one holiday there. <laughs> Firstly, because, you know, you go to Ibiza, it is an expensive place if you're young, but also once you've been a Ibiza, you're probably not going to, you're not going to want to do your Ryan Appers, are you? Yeah, in Malia. It's, it is, it's, it's overwhelming, isn't it? But the second thing being just, you know, me, me being real with it, like at 18, 19 years old, you shouldn't be getting exposed to that much drugs and that much yeah, like, madness. Because like, Ibiza is a crazy place. A yeah. lot of crazy yeah, things is, happen. Yeah. And you can be very easily influenced when you're out there. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, when you're a little bit older, you have enough, generally enough willpower to know what's, you know, to say, to be able to say no, to be able to say yes and make your own decisions. But when you're 18, 19 years old, you're getting off all these free things and, you know, stuff that you maybe weren't doing before, it can be, a, it, it can almost be a negative thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but having said that, um, you know, my best bit of advice would be, you know, if you're someone who, you know, you you want to get out there and you want to do a season, you know, fly out there. If you This is for Malia or for Magaluf or for Ian Apple. Fly out there, um, you know, look online on Facebook groups for accommodation, whether it's Malia Workers 2023, Zanti Workers. Um, you'll find a lot of people that are going out by themselves as well. You'll find accommodation on there. Um, usually you're probably looking at like, you know, three to 500 euros a month for your, for your apartment. Um, you know, fly out there one way, go by yourself. You don't even need to have your friends with you because mm. everyone else is by yourself and you're going to meet more people like that. And get yourself out there and go walk down the strip and just approach bars and just say, oh, you know, I want to work for you guys. How do I do it? They'll give you a trial, work for free your first night. That's yeah. why I always did everywhere. You know, Abifa, Malia, I always worked for free. Didn't ask for any money. I said, look, I'm going to prove to you that you're going to want to have me back the next day. You're going to want to pay me. Do you know what I mean? Um, so do your trial and and just enjoy it man and and meet as many people as you can when it comes to a beefer um doing a season out there it's a bit harder now because obviously with brexit you can only go there for 90 days um you can't legally work there if you've got a british passport you can only do like ticket really? selling pr in yeah man that's yeah, I know that. right, yeah i didn't know that something that people don't really see but you know i saw it straight away as soon as brexit went to place um they now have to prioritize spanish citizens italians Irish, so any European, oh, wow, that is... you know. So now you'll you'll notice you go to Ocean Beach, you go to WikiWoo, places that used to be all English. Now it's all Irish, oh, Irish wow. or Spanish, um, that's and, that, and that's the reason. So it's a little bit harder. But if you've got your own business or you want to do a bit of ticket selling or something like that, or you've got savings um, or something to support your money wise, you know, go to a beefer, um, <laughs> you know, 
look online at Beef for Workers 2023, look for accommodation, people that have got a spare room, um, and just go out there, man. And, you know, it's the best thing I ever did. It was genuinely the best, you know, times of my life out there. Um, pretty much all my close friends now are all from a beefer. Um, and even, you know, my incomes now has all come from being out in a beefer, growing my Instagram has come yeah. from that, you know. So, you know, don't, by all means, don't leave a really good job. Um, if you're going to go out there with no job, spunk all your money, come home to nothing, you know, uh, be, be reasonable about it. But if you're really in a position where you want to leave your hometown, you want to meet new people, maybe you come out of a relationship and, you know, you're a bit tired of your job, whatever else, there's no better place to go yeah. to meet people than a beefer. Mm. You know? Yeah, spot on. And the best time to do it is your 20s. Yeah. yeah. yeah 100%. Absolutely. You've got less responsibility. You can always bounce back from it. You're not I'm pissed crit- then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grant that over here. I couldn't even use phone over. <laughs> oh dear. No. Well, you've done a season I'll be for anyway, I didn't did. you? I did w- it. wouldn't call it a season. I've done about, I think, three months. Back I'd in like, it, yeah, it's, it's it's about, long, man. T- what was that, 2014, I think it was. So it was a long yeah, time ago. Well, it was a mint yeah. time to be there, to be honest. What was that, you doing for work? Were you... uh, do you know um, Tantra Bar in, um, in Play the Boss Up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. working for them. No way, yeah. Yeah, mate, just selling... Well, the beach was yeah, not often, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we laughed at you, Chris. So you didn't lie. Wait, what? So you didn't lie. I'm just saying. Uh, what's, what's funny then? <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to bleep the whole thing out if I say it. That's why. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, that didn't have to be me. It's such a silly oh, thing. All right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's reverse it back. So. Yeah, that was good. That was a good bit of advice, man. A really good, good yeah. bit of advice. Yeah, Solid advice. Sick. Really good sick. advice. Um. How do you ma- balance, you're a party guy, right? So how do you balance your work and that? Have you got a team? Is it just you? What's going on in the, behind the scenes? And also another thing, I know how expensive shit is mm. like to get all this production stuff. I know how ex- expensive editing is, the equipment, cameramen. I know how all of this, how, like, how are you managing to budget for spending on this, fund your lifestyle, and also how are you balancing it with work? Yeah, yeah man. So I'm one of them, firstly, where even though I spend money, I look at ways of, spending smartly um you know so for example miami i didn't i didn't pay to be on one table the whole time i was there 11 weeks you yeah know, i always got that through work through connections um that would have cost a normal person probably a quarter of a million pound to be on a table six nights a week Jesus Christ. to be on a table six nights a week in miami for nine weeks you know a table minimum minimum spend with 2k do you know what i mean so you're talking quarter of a million pound like so that was all free do you know what i mean so people look at me thinking oh, he's a millionaire blah 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 i'm not i'm just you know, I've made the connections. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm in a position where I can, you know, but I mean, in terms of, um, you know, other things, I mean, last year, as I was saying about the full-time job, at one point I had five incomes, you know, I had five income streams and the whole point of me not going back to B for last year and just doing holidays and not going to Miami last year was to stack money because I knew that at one point I'm going to need it. And and this year was that, that year where I needed yeah. it. Um, I thought, right, you know, I'm going to go do the music videos. I'm going to go to Dubai. I'm going to go to Miami. Like, you know, regardless of if I'm earning money when I'm there, it costs money to go there. You know, you have to put deposits down, you have to book flights, you have to book videographers, everything else. Um, so my advice is just spending money wisely, you know, like enjoy your money and go do these things, but, you know, look at ways you can maybe enjoy um, that experience without having to spend that much money. You yeah. Know? I looked up with Miami, I thought, right, you know, guys cannot get onto a table without buying one. And if they want to walk into a club, to just stand at the bar all night, it's going to cost them one to $200. No. How can I do it? Right, I'll be a promoter for a bit, you know, but with a promoter, you're not working set hours, you don't have to be there every night. So I was like, right, I'll still have that title as a promoter. I'll still turn up with a few girls each night. I'll still turn up with clients, but hmm. I won't put my heart and soul into it. I can still concentrate on my other things. Yeah. I can still go to the club for free, still be on a table for free, still drink for free. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You're networking yeah. the whole time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I'm networking the whole time. You know, I'm going out there like, you know, even if I was on a table, um, you know, with a group of girls and I post a story up with all the girls in there straight away, I'd say, right, put your Instagrams in. And I'm not even doing that to graft them. I'm doing that because I know I'm getting paid to bring those girls to the club. Yeah. So now if nine girls put their Instagram in and they repost um, my story, then other girls that are coming to Miami are going to click on that. Yeah, and, say, right, and, no, and the guys are going promoter. to see it as well. I want to be in that club. Shout. Yeah, he's going to shout. He's going to, his table looks lit. I want to be on that table. Yeah, and cool. then they shout me and then yeah. I've got another group of girls now for that next week that are going to come out with us, going to get me paid and going to get me into the club, you know, for free. Do you know what I mean? Um, Love it. 
so so yeah man it's just it's one of them these things cost a lot of money there's no way around that but it's just all about you know getting your fingers in the right pies um not licking ass but just getting respect from people and actually like you know treating yeah. people how you want to be treated um and being in the right place at the right times you've you got know? to be political when it comes to that stuff a lot of people like again think they're blowing smoke up someone's ass when it comes to networking but it's not it's it is literally being political knowing how to get what you want but at the same time it's not just one-sided right they obviously you're giving them something back as well so it's building That's your network it, up to that yeah, point yeah. where you're valuable enough for them to want to work with you it's, it's making people realize you've got some sort of value as well in in miami your value your currency i hate to say it was girls do you know what i mean like if you can turn up with good looking girls then you're valuable to that club yeah um and likewise in a beefer if it was like a villa party for example you're turning up with 10 guys that are willing to pay 100 euros each do you know what i mean mm. them guys are happy because you've given him that villa party to go to when everything was shut in lockdown that's what i was doing we was and that, doing. yeah 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 and that and, and that villa's happy because you've just brought him a thousand dollars a thousand euros you know what i was gonna ask a villa party still a thing <sighs> not really man so it was obviously huge in 2021 20, um, we went in 2020 2020 2020 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was the year I, I sat out but 2021 they were they were huge as well um and you know that was like the resort to clubs but i mean now I don't think so. Uh, I don't hear about them much. Yeah. I think the issue is, it's like, you know, if someone throws a villa party, it's probably just a rich boy has got a villa that wants. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In terms of actually, the idea of 2020, 2021 was to make money from it. Do you know what I mean? Because there was nothing else to do. Um, the problem is now, obviously, you go to a beefa and there's that many different events on each night. Yeah. People would probably rather... Be an event. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Corolla, Unless it's maybe like some sort of private house party where... Yeah. Or an after party, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then maybe, but yeah, so I, if I was a good looking bird sat here now, and you was asking me, and you know, that had lived in a beef and, and whatnot, and you was asking me if it's still Villa Party, she'd say, Yeah, every night, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in terms of like, you know, what I hear about, not really, man, just because there's too much competition, yeah, yeah. The clubs open, Facts. people want to spend the money in the club and see a big DJ, very true. Um, um just go back to your Miami question is, is being is Instagram a currency for men out in Miami because I know Instagram's a currency for women nearly everywhere mm. and men some places where you go mm. it is a currency some places in london there is in, your instagram currency followers does matter as a, as a man some, certain parts of the world in in miami doesn't matter uh what like your clout like yeah like, basically your clout as a bloke unless you're um, obviously enough you're a rapper a, a ball player or so, like status yeah basically. but if you're just an instagram famous person does that matter can you get into clubs and stuff so i can only speak for myself my friends and i mean i'd say you know my profile i got maybe 21k or something on there um in the uk i'd say that was some level of clout i think people look at me and like, you got a blue tick a clout, and i got the blue yeah in a in miami it didn't mean shit it yeah, didn't get really me, it didn't get i don't think my experience was any different to my friends who i lived with that had a thousand two thousand followers. oh wow no blue tick. yeah, yeah. Well, there's okay. so many people out there that are that have got the followers that are verified that are rich as fuck yeah. you know like you go, you're going into like money talks in there you go into like a, a restaurant and Drake's like on, on one of the tables the Nelt boys were like on a table next to us many times did you, you know meet them? I mean? uh, yeah yeah a couple of them yeah I met the um, not Kyle what's the Steve is it Steiny? Steiny, Steiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, Mason's favourite. Yeah, funny, <laughs> funny geezer, man. Funny geezer. Yeah, she spoke to them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They live oh, in Miami man. now. They live in Miami. Yeah, so yeah, they nice. were just up the road from where we was, one of the restaurants we, we worked with. Um, but but yeah, this is the thing, you know, because of the fact that there's so many of them individuals there. I mean, me and my 20K, just didn't yeah, mean enough, no. but again, though, you're just rubbing shoulders with these people. Yeah, man, exactly. that, that you yeah, just yeah. don't know what that, that conversation could lead to. We're going there. It's like, yeah, do you know, we'll bump into you there. Bang. All of a sudden you're there. You see a familiar face. You have a drink. Agreed. Conversation starts. We go to this party and then you meet the next person. It's crazy how stuff happens. Yeah, now yeah, you go, yeah. how did you two meet? You go, it's fucking wild, really, how we met. Like just stuff yeah, of being in the same place at the same time. Yeah, yeah literally. literally. Yeah. Think about some of the experience we have, people we know. Sidarius. Yeah. And where that led to. It's crazy, isn't it? It's great too. Cancun, spring yeah. break, first one. Met some mad people. Endless, it, man. people. The people you meet is crazy. Endless, bro. Like, and Lord from uh, yeah, Lord, Dubai. Yeah, shout out Lord. He's a good guy. Oh, he's a good guy, Gerard. But um, yeah, like net, uh, networking. I think networking is valuable. I don't think you can put a price on it. Never. Some people go to me like, why do you travel so much? Why do you do this? Why, why don't you put in money? I feel like this experience and these people you meet is... You can't, it's priceless. Yeah, it's it. priceless. Because you know the right person, you can be in a million pound job tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, mm. yeah Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So people, like, if you know the right person, just, like, if they're a fucking CEO or a high up, they go, you, you don't need to apply, bruv. I'll just put your thing up yeah, on yeah, Word yeah. and you'll have an interview tomorrow. Yeah. You? If you know the right person or yeah. the right people, 
<laughs> you can have anything really and that's why these coaches does is this like what i'm gonna launch because even though they're always pretty high ticket it's expensive to you know to jump on a call with will be with with myself and, and other of these people but it's getting that belief in people's head that to just go out there and network because mm, like yeah. you just said you can't put a price on it whether it's a friend for life you've met whether it's your new business partner whether it's your next wife do you know what i mean you can't put a price on these things so it's like you know unless you pay them of course but, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're um, at me when you say that <laughs> <laughs> you were just like yeah you were just in the car yeah. right, that's all, that's all. um but but yeah man so it's it's just you know you can't put a price on these things so providing someone that motivation and um you know that le letting people know that is is one of them things that's priceless as well here's a good question for you then if you you've obviously been around the world a little bit you've seen quite a bit so i'm sure plenty that you can't talk about plenty you can what would you say is the most valuable piece of of advice and the most valuable bit of life lessons i suppose you've learned in all your travels around the world um do you know what? Like, similar to you have you have Faris on the other week, and mm. he, he said something. I'd say very similar, man. It's not letting people know your next move. Not um, know it. Do you know what it is? It's where it's knowing where to keep people. Yeah. So like, you know, I'm someone who I know a lot of people and stuff, but I only class people as my boys. The, the people I class as my boys is a very small amount of people. Do you know yeah. what I mean? People actually tell my private info to is a very small amount of people. So what I've learned is just you know know when you meet someone yet yeah, obviously like you know get to know the person but don't let them in too close to your mm. life you know don't trust everyone you know everything is not as it seems at face value you know yeah. like i've had my fair share of people that have fucked me over they backstabbed me over the years um with, with all kinds of things when you're living abroad people people do lose the value of friendship and and trust and everything else people do you over but it's all about just learning where to keep everyone you know mm. um not trusting people too much um, but also, you know, letting people into your life and just, you know what I mean? It's it's just, th that's my best. I don't even know if it's advice, but it's like, that's something I personally have learned and, you know, is important. There's an element of street smart that I don't think we value enough that I believe we all have. I believe, I, I know I have street smart. Mm. I know all of you boys have street smart and it's by the sense that you do, but some people don't actually have yeah, that. They don't. They don't. Right. And you, that's, a, that's a skill. Mm. And, and we all take it for probably for granted because we just we, we grew up, we grew up like that yeah. do you know what I'm saying and you, I can tell you I know when someone's instantly trying to try and use me for something I know, mm. I know when someone's trying to use me or use me as a pawn or try and take advantage of my good my good nature or something I know instantly I'm like yeah, I don't trust that's from your experience yeah it is. exactly from that many people but there'll be people out there who aren't experience or don't have street smart and they'll let easily get fucked over use for their money use for their whatever they, what they've yeah, got sure. you know what i'm saying so when we're saying it like oh careful who you let in and stuff we take that for granted because we we know who i can judge it from straight away i can go it's like second nature yeah he's, he's like a don't I'm trust not, him, yeah, he's a donut i know what yeah. he's about you can you can see how people move mm. the energy the way they're talking what they're about what they're saying i'm like nah, he, this guy's a donut he's not legit i can tell that straight away but some people easily get sucked in for that yeah. so you've got to be quite, he's great guy he's a great guy, guy yeah, yeah. Didn't no, he, didn't he try to buy an Apple Watch off some geezer off London Bridge? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, I told a story. So, uh, uh, yeah, well, did, I, did I get hustled? Did I get hustled? You close, man. Did I get hustled? I was all stuff with drinks in. We're, go we're going slightly off. We've got a guest on pod, but I'll tell everyone back home. <laughs> I, I was in Canterbury. Oh, my street smart kicked in, didn't it? Yeah, did on. I get hustled? Explain yourself. Right, so I'm walking through Canterbury. For those who don't know, it's like 20 minutes south from us or 30 minutes south from us. And I'm, I've been at a rooftop for the last two hours drinking. And I walk out of this rooftop and I'm walking through the street and this guy's got a bag and he's like, boss, I've got, I've got something in here for you. I was thinking, boy, it's boss in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think when someone says I've got something in here for you, I'm well wary. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? He goes into his bag and I'm like, what the fuck's going on in? He pulls out an Apple Watch. He goes, I've got Apple Watch here. I was like, it's funny, actually, it's all sealed up, plastic seal. It's got the logo, everything. It looks, it looks clean. I'm like, all right, sweet. Okay, well, well, how much do you want for it? I can't remember the exact prices. Say he said like 200. Oh, he said 250. I was like, all right, 250. I was like, can I look at it? He goes, yeah, of course you can look at it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So I'm looking at the box. Obviously, I can't take the seal off it and stuff because it would ruin the box. So I'm looking at it and it all looks good. I went, what one is it? It went Series 5 or Series 6, whatever. I was like, do you know what? I was actually looking at a new Apple Watch recently. I was like, oh, you know what? I walked off. I went, no, you know what, mate? No, don't worry, 250. And I had 250 cash in my pocket, which is funny enough. And I put it, gave it back to him and I walked off. Walking down the street, he goes, 
calls me over. He goes, boss, 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 I'll chuck in AirPods as well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. I was like, fucking hell, AirPods as well, yeah? He goes, yeah, come here, come here. 250 AirPods and, and watch. I was like, this sounds too good to be fucking true. Anyway, he gets the box well, out. He's already walking off with just the watch as well. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Like... so he pulls out the AirPods and the watch and he's like, you can have it. And he went, I'll tell you what, before I give you, I've got the cash out. I went, before I give you the cash, let me take the seal off the box of the of the thing. Because obviously I'm not going to take it off the donut, I'm going to look. Pulls it out, he goes, look, legit, but le- legit. And it looked clean. I was thinking, all right, fair enough. This guy's legit. I was like, why, why are you doing this? How can you get me? He goes, boss, it's, it's, it's stolen. It's stolen. I was like, I don't care about buying stolen goods. Anyway, bleep that out, Ash. But anyway. <laughs> Leave that in there, yeah. man. Anyway, so I was not stolen from people, obviously from a factory or whatever it was. Not actually people robbing people's ass because obviously it looked brand new. Anyway, the point of the matter was, he gets it out and I'm like, it seems way too good to be true. Why is he giving it to me? I was like, can I feel it? And I felt it, bro. I mean, it was cheap plastic. It felt, it felt like it was made in, I don't know what, it looked good, but it was, it was all cheap. But the, the imprints on it were perfect. Everything was perfect. But just from feeling the case in it, I was like, got a it's, but I was so close. I, I had cash in my hand. Luckily, it was with my boy as well, so he couldn't rob me. But I was thinking, I, I was so close. Before he handed the cash Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, 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 before I gave him the cash, I checked it all over. But, but, but if I wasn't, Oh, I don't know if I was, I was a few drinks in as well. I was thinking if I wasn't street smart enough, I would have easily gave him that money. Yeah, yeah. It was so close. Everything was legit. Like, I mean, it looked really good. But again, some people would take that for granted. Like, you'd, you'd even probably people would hold that. My, my mum and dad, if you gave them that thing, they wouldn't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a second, they would probably hand over the money and took it. Do you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, you know, people sell TVs and that at the back of vans and that. I've had people buy TVs off the back of vans, get home, and it's just a case with bricks in it for the way. Put the bricks in the telly, stuff like that. That's crazy, isn't it? Pure hustle, mate. Pure it hustle. It to like, you know, what we were just saying, and though it's like not trusting everything at face value. Yeah, yeah. That's God, yeah. It comes back to the advice thing. I thought of it now. If something is, it sounds or looks too good to be true. It normally it is. is. Probably yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my yeah. advice, yeah. I was stuck with before, <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's my advice, it's, man. It, it, it's literally... It's, proof of the pudding facts 100 I mean, if it does seem too good to be true it always, and it when you're in that moment it's very hard to because when you're in well, you ain't got time as well no, yeah 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 yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm, I'm in sales so i know the pressures you put the pressure on the on the yeah. on the client or the customer straight away and you want them to do it in that moment because you know that as soon as that moment's gone the chance of you getting them again is zero nearly mm-hmm. so you, you need urgency, you create right? the urgency like boss i've got to go because obviously the, the, <laughs> oh, the police are coming the police are coming <laughs> so i'm like all right i know i know what's going on here so i'm recognizing <laughs> this but like you said it, it seemed too good to be true i was like this is fucking respect the hustle, yeah. bro, respect the hustle though if you'd hustled me do you know what i'd have took the l i'd have tried finding him i tried finding him I would have took the L. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a good, solid advice, man. Yeah, if it's too good, to be, especially when you're abroad and stuff, it's easy to be taken advantage yeah. of, isn't it? Especially abroad. You don't know people. You ain't got like, you, you know, your mum to fall back on. You ain't got your, your best mates. Yeah. Or like, you know, what, what's this geezer like? What's this girl like? You know, it's kind of literally like, unfortunately, it's one of them experiences. You have to like make mm. the mistakes and fuck up to learn from them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? 100%. So all of us in this room, we've all like oh, made mistakes. Absolutely. We've all been fucked over, whatever else. But it, it does make you yep. a better like a stronger man, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Man, yeah. In, my, in my restaurant, I feel like Dr. Phil sometimes because any any of staff I have, they have like their own set of issues and I'm just like, you know, everything they're telling me, I'm like, trust me, in hindsight, you're going to look back at this and it's going to make you a stronger person. So those L's you take, that's actually where you learn the most anyway, I think personally. It's like when you are at your lowest or when you have been fucked over or when things have gone bad, moving for, like moving forward from there, you don't make the same mistakes. Mm-hmm. If you do it again, then you are a bit of a muppet. You need to learn yeah. from that. Yeah. And I know it sounds a bit cliche because Again, you can, but the more you're in the, in the pit, the the easier it's going to be when you're uh, like, when time to come. Really, I think personally. What's that saying? Sh- sh- fool me, what? Fool me once, shame, shame on, on you. Shame, shame on you. Shame, you. shame, shame on me. Yeah, yeah. basically, yeah. man. If if you do it once, it's your fault. If I do it again, it's it's my fault. Yeah, but not seeing it. And it's little the lesson. What were you gonna say? Um, I was gonna say off the back of what you just said there, Matt. Yeah. What's a valuable lesson that you've learned? Like a bad one, you think, oh, fucking hell, like I'm not gonna get stung like that again. Um. Recent memory was 2021. Um, I thought like, you know, no one would ever fuck me over in a beef or blah, 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 this and that. Um, we'd lived in shitholes for years. I thought, right, we'll get a villa this year. Um, and um, we found this guy, seemed really genuine, whatever else. We were talking away, saw the listing. And I, I even had friends that had lived in that villa before. Um, they even vouched for this guy. And we put a load of money down, like several thousand pound each. And at this point, like we just, you know, we're coming out of lockdown, do you know what I mean? So none of us are really being on it without yeah. money. Um, hand the money over, booked flights, everything. Um, I think it was five or six of us that were going to be in there, um, in that villa. All put the money down, booked the flights, like told work we're leaving, everything else. Oh, wow. um, and ran off with the money, man. And the geezer was actually oh. on the news, Spanish news. Um, for something else that he'd done as well. 
Yeah. And the thing is, when it's like, you know, someone that lives there, a resident, like, you can't say, oh, I'm going to send some boys around to you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they are the boys. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, you know, and it's one of them that took all our money, and only two out of six of us went, went back that summer really? um, to Ibiza. So, like, people left the jobs, you know, they put all this money up front. So, oh, so valuable lesson was, you know, do a bit more research. Don't just like, you know, hand your money over to a stranger. Yeah. Um, you know, something's too good to be true. It's probably too yeah, good to be true. That's it, bro. Yeah, that that's it. Wow. Price. Um, you know, that they were really flexible with like um, you know, anyone watching this that's lived in a beef and knows it's a nightmare getting accommodation. So the fact they were so flexible of what date we went out there, when we paid, oh well, when we paid wasn't really flexible on, but <laughs> everything else, yeah, you know, it just seemed too good to be true, and it and it was. Man. Was there no alarm bells ringing? I think mm, why, why, why? Um, a little bit, but again, you get brave, man. You know, I'd already lived in a for for a few years, right? And not yeah, yeah, never dumped me over with anything. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I kind of the best almost. Yeah, you just yeah. Bought, you think like, oh, you know, oh, you know, all this stuff. Um, and it was the exact same actually. Last year, I went to the out for the closing parties. I think it was when I bumped into you. Yeah. Was that when I lost my wallet? Was it that week? Did you lose my wallet robbed? You you did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, my wallet robbed. Yeah, was that for the week that I seen you? <laughs> I think it was. You know, I remember you saying it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another another lesson, not being too complacent. You know, I'm I'm someone who I like my designership, but I'm not someone that goes dripped out. Like, yeah, yeah. At all. Um, but I treat myself to a Dior bag. Yeah, man bag. I'd always wanted this bag. Um, come out to a beefer, and genuinely, I only just I only had it on in the rave because I didn't have the pockets for my stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I had my wallet in there, my phone in there, and we went to high. I think it was like glitter box closing, maybe something like that. Oh, wow! Now it was raining outside, so as you all know, when you're in high, the smoking area is huge. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So any one time that club is probably five, six hundred people outside. It was pissing it down. So all them five, six hundred people are inside an already packed club. So it was the busiest I've ever seen it. So we were in the toilets trying to get through, and what's happening when I've got this man bag here is my bag's just like twisting behind me. I've, you know, you, you just crushed like that, right? So my pal's like, just like trying to grab me and he's like, oh, Matt, I've just done my, um, just done my wallet robbed. Ugh. Um, Like that, have you got like your card for a drink or money for a drink or something? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone into this little cubicle just to get some space. My bag's wide open, my wallet's oh, gone as no. well. And like, the one time, I don't usually carry cash. The one time I had a lot of cash in there. Mm. I had all my cards in there, my card for being abroad, my ID's in there. That's so like nice. The principal, man. My beef is known for that, though. Yeah, no, it does happen. Absolutely. It does now happen. Now more than ever, man, you know, especially watching and stuff like that. But again, it's just yeah. being yeah. too complacent and just confident, thinking, oh, I'm in a beef. I know everyone. No one had ever robbed me. Yeah. Like, you know, it happens to anyone, man. Yeah. I don't care how does, big yeah. and hard you are. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, you know, one of my boys got his 20 grand watch robbed off his, they broke it off his wrist and broke his wrist and, and take it off him. There you go, man. My beef is outside ocean, he said. Outside ocean, come That's out of ocean. Nice. This geezer's like, do you want to spud me? Or not just, do you want to spud me? Come <laughs> over like, oh, how you doing, mate? How, how you doing? Saw the rubber strap. It was a Rolex, 20 bag Rolex, rubber strap. Ripped it off his wrist and broke his wrist while ripping it off, man. You see it coming a mile That's off the thing, Ocean Beach, full of Brits that are going to be pissed out of when they leave and everyone's flexing the night. Yeah. I've done it, sure we all have. And, you know, catch you when you're out. You might be by yourself. You're staggering away at friendly you know come over and then boom do you know what i mean these people are professionals yeah, it's, yeah, it's, slapping, yeah, yeah. it's when you're slapping you know, obviously a lot of time people... you don't even know it's happened do you yeah know you mean? don't that, that's the, the worst thing isn't it yeah yeah, yeah yeah you don't even know it's happened and everyone out there is obviously as well they're going out you're getting off your nut don't that's let that put you off though people for everyone watching this oh yeah yeah don't let that put you off like listen you could you could walk around london at the wrong place at the wrong time and have the same thing happen to you yeah so don't let that like that these things are far and few between um when this don't live in fear like yeah you know people tell me all the time oh my mum especially. My mum is like yeah. as well, yeah. Oh, are you sure you want to go to this country? You yeah. sure you want to do that? I don't... Mexico's apparently the scariest... Well, it is. It's one of the worst countries on earth. But I don't care about these things. Like, you can't live in fear. you just got to go and do shit. Yeah. Obviously, you don't With fly to a... reason. Point. Yeah, probably. don't fly to a war zone, obviously. Like, probably not best to go to Ukraine right now. But I'm, you, know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd still... If someone said to me, oh, that country's a bit dodgy. Like, when I went to South Africa now, I was like, all right, I'll go to South Africa. I don't care. Do you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't ever let any stories like this stop me or stop me nah. or deter me from going places like i went to london the other night and someone said are you is london still a right to go to mm -hmm. like well, yeah it is a bit of a cesspit and people are getting robbed all the time up there but I'm not, I'm not gonna stop myself i'm not gonna stop living in i'm not gonna live in fear because these nah. people you know what i'm saying like be have your wits about you no, i would never go alone i'd always be with my boys and obviously that can't always protect you but you know what i'm saying you can't <laughs> live in fear you just you gotta be kind of so yeah, well, that should be a general rule for people you know i think we've always had this rule amongst our group of boys anyway is that any festival you go to, any club you go to, any party you go to, whether you're here or abroad, if someone wants to go to the bathroom, if someone wants to go and get a drink, you always 
can go with them. Facts. Even if it's just two of you, yeah? If the other says you want to go drink and no one else wants to go, even if I've just, come on, I ain't going to let you go on your own. Do you know what I mean? Someone's to go to the toilet. Like, you don't got to go. I've just been. Bro, please, I need to go to the toilet. Two or three of you go to the toilet together. Do you know what I mean? Just so no one's ever left on their own. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've been at festivals loads of times and out of places. And there's always, all right, there's always a lot of us that goes out. That's just our group. But we've come across so many people, that, even at like, freaking We Are Festival years ago, that have had the shit kicked out of them, been robbed for everything they got on them. Like, Man, where's your pals? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, Do you know how what? are you by yourself? Bro? Do you know what I mean? How are you walking around by yourself? So don't ever... Go to the toilet by yourself yeah. or go to get a drink by yourself and don't let anybody else go by themselves yeah. either. It's like, adding on top of that, it's not even just like getting into fights, like physical fights. When I see people like fucked and like drunk or out there now, I'm just thinking like, you, you've obviously come here with someone. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. you by yourself? Mm. Like, I could, I've never been in a situation where we've all gone out and had one. I've never been left, yeah. Whether or not I met you and yeah, Mr. Like, Mr. Mute over well, that's here. that's what I'm saying. Like, you extra mute. mute. <laughs> Mr. Extra mute. <laughs> A medical tent, bro. No, like, that's that's, I was in a saying. bad way, bro. <laughs> and I said, "Oh, where are you, what are you doing?" Because I can't leave him. Obviously, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. I, didn't, shit, yeah. I didn't know you boys, oh, did I? No. I didn't this know guy, you boys. Yeah, this guy was off his nut, like, and obviously we've just literally met uh, Yosef, and this guy didn't have his left on his right. We're obviously carrying him. He's like, "Let's go in here." I'm like, "Bro, I can't. I need to sit with this prick because he's he's off. He's obviously too." I wasn't telling you to leave him, by the way. No, I, was no, bring, no. I, was, I was saying bring he him. He did. It was, like, yeah, yeah. it was like, leave him there. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I just remember. That's what I was saying. I, I can't leave the geezer. I can't take him inside. He needs a minute. So I was like, we, we need to sit down. Know who your pals are. This geezer said, leave him there, bruv. Just so you know. I didn't say leave him there. I did not <laughs> say like, Just bear in mind, first day I met him, I've never met him in my life. No, nah, no. Nah, he was just like, get him up. We'll go inside, have a good time. But I was like, he's just too fucked. But this is what I'm saying. Like When I see people divide themselves and they're like, either out cold, I'm thinking, how are you by yourself? Like, who are your friends? I would yeah. never leave my pal. Never, never, no Knowing they're that messed up. Like, I'll stay with them. I don't care if my night's ruined. It doesn't matter. I think the common assumption is, like, that's just applies to women. Like, oh, if you're a girl, you need to, like, nah. be together. But no it's guys as well, no. man. No. I mean, that's like, a good point. You know, don't you think that's that, like, you know, point. when it's girls, it's like, it's girls. But, oh, like, you're, you're fully grown geezer. Like, you can do it yourself. But, like, you when you're said, intoxicated. Man, like, not no, you... when you're intoxicated, it's a whole new ball game or abroad or in a, a crowd environment. Like so many things can happen. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's one of them just stick together. Unfortunately, there are people that go to these places with the complete wrong intentions. Mm, yeah, if, you're, if you're one guy in the toilet and f us five went there sober with that intention and we want one guy in the toilet, yeah. that's, you're finished, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Do you know what I mean? Two, group, two, two lads together, three, it puts you off. You're going to go yeah. to the guy by himself. Cool. Yeah, thousand percent. You know, so just don't be that guy by yourself. Have you lot seen uh, seen those videos where like someone's filming and then someone grabs it, they push them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then like- and filming, a, filming and a show like that. And I'm just like, how have you just done that? It's filming it's... a show, the geezer's behind, say us five are uh, watching yeah. people with their phones. They're like, right, this guy here, look, we're going to snatch his phone. He snatches his phone out of his hand, passes it behind me, like this to, to Merck, him. and I'm stood there, just still dancing like that. And he gives you turn around, like, switch as well. and he's gone. He's got, next to no, my his phone's over there. Yeah, where, yeah, where's yeah. Like they, they switch he's it. Like, ah, where's my phone gone? Everyone's just like still dancing behind him. What's a mad place in it, man? Have you not seen that movie before? Focus. No. With Will Smith and Margaret Robbie when it's they're called, robbing it's called Focus. Oh, phenomenal yeah, film. Is it Focus? Is yeah. it Focus? I can't remember. It's it's called Focus. Focus. It's, I don't film you I've seen it. I saw it in cinema. Sure it's Focus. Unbelievable. Then people are that that exists. That's, that's a legit. Then people are real thing. That's a real they thing. They finesse everyone on there. If I could, I would do it too. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe to the top one percent. Doing the bar, bruv. See how you go. <laughs> yes. Got locked up. Fair play. I was gonna say though, how many more seasons you reckon you've got in you, bro? Because again, twenty-seven now. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Getting on. You're gonna have to do more. Yeah. I have to start seeing these Botox ladies soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming out now. Um, I, th I think the answer to it is like, you know, I, I, I always said five seasons was enough and that was like after 2021. But now I don't really look at it as a season. Seasons I look at when I was like going out, getting drunk every night, um, just mm. working for a bar or something. But for me, like I see it more as I'm just living in that place, growing a business. Yeah, I mean? love that. Um, you know, so seasons as in me, don't get me wrong, I'll still be out a lot, you know what I'm mm. like? I'm not gonna sit here like, <laughs> yeah. but, um, but in terms of like partying every single night, getting off my head and just like and living enough to get by, that's done, do you know what I mean? So that kind of season's done. Um, but in terms of going and basing myself in place like a beefer, you know, maybe, you know, obviously Dubai, Tulum, something like that in the winter, then it all depends on, you know, um, how financially worth it is for me yeah you know? i'm putting money first out <laughs> and partying second do you know what yeah. i mean and as i say if i can merge the two like i have been doing then i'm going to carry on doing it as long as i can yeah so what do you hope to, to uh, we asked a similar question earlier but to ask you in a different way yeah man by the end of by the time you get to the end of 2023 what would you like to have achieved what would you like to look back on and go yeah do you know what ticked off i want yeah i wanted to do x y and z and i've and i've done it i think firstly just getting my my song in the charts getting yeah, a song in the charts. Nice. Um, i think that you know 
no matter what position you're in, I just need to be on the map there with that. Cool. Um, so getting a song in the, in the charts, um, I think, you know, I mean, launching my, my online coaching and, yeah, nice. and growing a good, strong client base there. Um, and I think just seeing more places, man, just getting myself out to more more places um, being settled by, you know, somewhere that I can actually see myself long term by the end of the year. Yeah, nice. Um, and just keep doing what I'm doing, man. Keep yeah. pushing on. Um, you know, there's no specific figure in mind or anything like that. It's just more like doing everything i'm doing and doing it better and love that yeah yeah nice answer you know. we said it out now into the universe man you got now you got to do it that's it man yeah, we'll support yeah, you all the way bro we'll support you all the way support you all the way boys likewise with you lot yeah you cheers know. bro is there anything you want to plug or anything you want any last words message you want to give out to the public might be watching or anything you want to say on camera um yeah just you know if you want to follow me on instagram matt holmes uh, extra s on the end and an underscore and um, my youtube type in matt holmes um should hopefully be the first one that comes up uh, one of my songs um as i say concierge wise for a beef you can contact myself or a beef for concierge services um i'm not gonna launch i'm not gonna announce the name of the can't be words out it's been a long day <laughs> can't, um announce just yet the name of the the online coaching but that will all be on my instagram very soon um so so yeah man Pleasure being on, boys. Yeah, pleasure. thanks for coming, brother. Thanks for coming, man. It was, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, man. Big link up, uh, big link up in our beef for this yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll see me again. Like, yeah, nah, maybe not looking as uh, sober. <laughs> we'll, we'll all have glasses on. Don't worry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The shoes. Now, appreciate you coming though. Four yeah. and a half hours. It's yeah, man. That's yeah, massive love yeah, for that. That's massive love. Appreciate it, man. It was good. It was good. Really good pod. Good chat. Listen, guys, if you like the pod, I'm sure you did. If you made it this far, big love. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next. Oh, Cheers. Bang it. Peace. Bang it. Nice. Love that.